Morning, everybody. Morning. On this Trinity Sunday, will you please rise for the chiming of the hour and the presentation of God's holy word. Sabbath day to each and every one of you, and a hearty welcome to those of you who are here in person and also those who are joining us online. I'm simply today going to invite you to take a close look at all the announcements that are in today's bulletin and to mark your calendars accordingly. There are a lot of exciting, exciting things that are coming up. At this time, I'm going to ask uh, Sharon Nans if she'll come forward, uh, and Joel's going to join me, and we want to uh, celebrate you today slash surprise her today. <laughs> she didn't know this was coming. So we're going to put her right in, we're going to put yeah. you right in the middle, right <laughs> front and center. So here we go. So you may have seen the uh, notice in your bulletins. You may have not, but Sharon, today, we pause to mark your 40 years, 40 years, y'all, of service as the leader of the Women's Bible Study Group. Kitty Mortera shared with me that you started the class when your first child, Jason, was about 18 months old, and the group, the group was actually called the Mother's Bible Study, particularly targeting young mothers. The Young Mother's Bible Study. So there you go, the Young Mother's <laughs> Bible Study. Thank you for the correction. 40 years. Yes, 40 I can years. Help, I can help from Sharon Dickinson along the way. I must say that. <laughs> no, mighty, 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 mighty fun. Uh, this, uh, that's quite the milestone, and I'm just going to ask, let us give, uh, to the glory of God, a round of applause. Forty years, y'all. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Forty years. In honor of your service, uh, the Women's Bible Study, we worked behind the scenes to sponsor the flowers for today. They're given as an expression of how much your teaching and fellowship and friendship have meant to all of us over the years. Falling Worship, the Cookies and Lemonade are also being hosted by the Women's Study Group to celebrate your commitment to God and the impact you've had on their lives of discipleship. So thank you, and God bless you, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Golly, man. 40 years, y'all. 
guided now by God's Holy Spirit, let us join together in worship, in praise and thanksgiving to the living God. Please rise and join me in our call to worship. The heavens declare the glory of God. The earth is the Lord's and all that lies therein. For the beauty of the earth and the joy of being alive. Come, let us sing God's praise.
why do we confess our sins? Because we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Let us pray as one. Holy God, when we grow numb to the beauty and wonder of your creation and fail to thank you for it, forgive us. When we forget the miracle of your grace in Jesus, the risen Christ, ever making all things new, forgive us. When we neglect the guidance of your creative spirit and venture out on our own, forgive us. On this Trinity Sunday, help us find our way back to you so that with renewed spirits, we can venture out again into the world to glorify you, to enjoy you, and to serve you forevermore. Amen. Let the good news resound. In Jesus Christ, we are indeed forgiven. With that good news ringing in our ears, let us rise together to march and sing in the light of God's redeeming love. Will you please stand? you guys know that this weekend is Memorial Weekend Day weekend, right? Do you know what we remember on Memorial Day weekend? The veterinarians. Almost. The veterans. Yeah, veterinarians, I also want to remember them. They might also, some veterinarians might also be veterans. Isn't that a cool way to think about it? Good job, Helen. Um, yes, we remember the veterans. We remember people who served in the armed forces. And I thought, to, memory is a funny thing. How do you turn these on? You, can you turn it on for me? Yes. Oh, my goodness, you guys. I thought it was a button. You can turn all of these on. So sometimes we use candles to remember things. Have you ever had a memory of a time in your life that was actually pretty stressful, but when you look back on it, you just remember the good stuff? Like when we moved, the summer that we moved here to Roanoke was kind of a stressful summer. We'd had months of preparation, and we had all these decisions to make. But looking back, I just remember the amazing stuff. And so sometimes when we think of Memorial Day weekend, especially those of us who never actually were serving in the armed forces, we just kind of remember the highlights, right? We just remember, oh, you know, America won this war, and we helped here, and we did this. But I want us to take a moment to think about the hard stuff that happens for all those people who serve in the armed forces and for all their families. Did you know back before cell phones, and you know easy communication you could go a really long time without knowing what your your service member where they were what they were doing if they were okay so you would have to be home stressed worried thinking about them and not knowing so we remember that and we know that god was there and loving those people through that hard time and sometimes as a service person you had to go out and do things that were hard and scary and difficult and you had to live with that memory of that. So we remember that, and we know that God was with them and was loving them through that. And then, yeah, let's spread these out so they look kind of nice. <laughs> we remember today, Calvin and Helen, remember, we also can remember the physical and emotional and spiritual wounds that people may have received while they were in the line of service and how hard it is to come back to regular life after going through something scary and hard and having everyone around you not know what it's like to go through something that scary and hard. And you're having to hold that in inside of you. That is something that we need to remember for those people who served. It's not just a simple service. It's not just going out and doing something easy. It's doing something that can be really hard. And so we remember that and we 
are so grateful that God is there for each one of those people, whether they had a simpler job or a really hard job, God is there walking them through the, those things with love, ready to help. And we are here with love, ready to share that love with people too. So on this Memorial Day, we can enjoy the barbecues. We can enjoy the day off from school or the end of the school year for some people. Or the end of veterinarians. Yeah. The, the veterans, that's right. We remember all that and we hold the good, the happy, the light, along with the hard and the difficult and the dark. And we know that God is there in both of those, all of those things, all of those experiences, loving us through it. All right, let's say a prayer together. You can just listen. We're going to do it. You can just listen to me pray, all right? God, thank you for your love that comes through the darkness and the light, and it shines through all of us. And help us to continue to be that light as we remember and help people who have gone through the good and the bad. And we pray this in your son's name. Amen. Now let's share some light and some peace with each other. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. I'll, can you leave those candles there? What's up? I want to march out with candles. You want to march out with candles? Well, maybe at the end of the service we can do that. trying to find my thing so I'm not accidentally mic'd, <laughs> mic'd anymore. Let us pray. God of the Trinity, we love you. We praise you. We seek to serve you. In these scriptures and the hearing of your holy word, we ask you to guide us by your Holy Spirit. Deepen our understanding and inspire us to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. You may follow along in the Pew Bibles on page one. Listen to the word of the Lord. In the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and a darkness covered the face of the deep, while the Spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. Our gospel reading today is from John chapter one, verses one through three, verse 14 and 16. You may find this on page 79 in the New Testament part of your Bible. Listen again to the word of the Lord. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into beginning through him, and without him not one thing came into being. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. A reading from the book of Acts is found on page 104 in your New Testament. 
few Bibles, and it contains this proclamation from the Apostle Peter after the giving of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Peter says, Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you both see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Beloved from testaments old and new, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning there are three basic points I want to make, commenting on the text that Anne just read for us. Before I share them with you, I ask you to write down or hold in your thoughts these three words. So this is a test for you if you don't write it down, <laughs> but I know you can do it. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If you're writing them down or visualizing them in your mind, please pair them with these three words, Creator, Christ, and Counselor. Now, if you have those words etched on your bulletins or in your mind's eye, side by side, Father, Creator, Son, Christ, and Holy Spirit, Counselor, we're good to go. And here are the three things that I want to share with you today. The first thing begins with our answering a basic question. It may be one that we wrestle with all our Christian lives. What is faith? To help us answer it, I invite you to turn to the stunning picture that graces the front of our bulletins. Will you look at that? The picture that you see there comes from NASA. It was taken in 2009 by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, which captures 12 pictures of the Earth rise daily, but is ordinarily occupied snapping images of the moon's surface. Occasionally... The orbiter will point off into space to do such things as observe the lunar air and perform instrument calibration measurements. I know all you engineers are loving this. During these movements, Earth and other planets pass through the camera's field of view and stunning images, such as the one that covers our bulletin today, appear. I don't know about you, but I find the picture captivating. I find it also gives me a perspective I would not otherwise have, which I believe God always has. Most of all, it draws me back to Genesis 1, where we read, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God, brooded over the face of the deep. I want to press the pause button for a moment and ask you, what was the basic question I raised a moment ago? Can you tell me? What is faith? I, I knew you would know that. What is faith? In the beginning, God. That's faith. In the beginning, God. Do you realize what a monumental statement of faith that is? In the beginning, God. We could just stop right there and go home today. In the beginning, God, even before the dawn of creation, even before earth and plants and planets and solar systems and animals and homo sapiens, even before all of that, there was, in the beginning, God who created all that is and would become to be by the sheer force, by the sheer power, by the sheer utterance 
of God's word. And it was so. And it is now. And it always will be ever evolving into the newness of life, of matter, of meaning. The earth evolving into that. And all that surrounds it. Then as now the Spirit of God the Creator was brooding over the deep darkness, not as some distant entity, but as a loving, gracious Creator, life maker, star shaper, whose caring creative spirit was present and rustling with the sound of intimacy, which is the title of today's sermon. That spirit rustling with the sound of intimacy, saying, this is what I want to make. This is the creation and its creatures with whom I want to be intimately connected starting now and forevermore. I believe God perhaps was asking, will they care for the earth I will make for them? For the flowing seas, the ground beneath their feet, the air they breathe. Will they take care of each other the way I care about them? Will they marvel at the beauty of the earth and the wonder of humankind and the joy of being alive and not forget the Father Creator, source of life here and now and of that life beyond the grave? I have a new friend I met uh, not too long ago. Beth and I sat with her at a dinner uh, gathering for Presbyterian pastors who are early in their callings serving local congregations. My friend's name is Hannah Anderson. She lives here in the valley and attends a Presbyterian church nearby. She is also a prolific writer with an interest in in natural theology. She preached and then offered a workshop not too long ago during our spring presbytery meeting. She was kind enough to give me one of her books. Toward the end of the book, she writes eloquently about God, the changing seasons in nature, and how, in fact, those seasons mirror the seasons of our natural lives that are always peppered with God's promises and God's presence. Hannah's book, if you're interested, is entitled Turning of Days, Lessons of Nature, Season, and Spirit. And here is what she wrote that captivated me when God called my heart. Listen for the sound of intimacy between God and God's creation as she speaks of winter and spring and see how it resonates with your spirit and that of God's as she helps us answer the question, indeed, what is faith? Here's what Hannah says. If nature teaches you anything, it's that you must concern yourself with life and not simply your own. Because what nature knows is that one life does not stand alone any more than one seed stands alone. Your life stands in the generations. And one day the generations planted in hope will rise together. One day we will live as our Redeemer does. One day we shall see Him standing upon the dust. One day we shall see our God. Today is not that day, however. Today, it is still winter. Today, the wind and rain blow cold. So what are we to do? What are you to do while you wait? This is what you do in winter. You plan for spring. This is what you do when the earth lies dark. You plan for spring. This is what you do when death seems to reign. You plan for resurrection. I 
I will tell you this Lord's Day that I find what Hannah writes so inspiring even now when we feel like our lives are maybe stuck in the dead of winter. No matter the season. And June is waiting to bust out all over, perhaps an earth rise, coupled with an S-O-N rise. Is all our spirits really need to have our perspective change from a helpless one to a God-centered, holy one. Ah, the sound of intimacy with God. The rustling of the Spirit. The gifts of God's grace. So what about the second thing I wanted to share with you today? Well, I may have tipped my hat if you were listening closely a moment ago. From the Father Creator comes the Christ who, according to John, in the beginning was with God, as was the Spirit. As John minces no words and expands our spiritual imaginations, which sometimes takes a lot of work because we are so often earthbound and anxious We hear John proclaim this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and that Word was life through whom all was made. And that Word, that Jesus, that Christ of God, became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. That's a mouthful to swallow, isn't it? Maybe I can help connect the dots. By grace, God created the world. We had absolutely nothing to do with it. At the beginning with God are both Christ and the Spirit. By grace, God becomes flesh. As far as I know, unprecedented in any other faith. The choice God makes to speak the earth into being and to remain intimately connected to it throughout its evolutionary processes and all that surrounds it to this very moment and beyond and to follow that up by becoming a human being born of flesh and blood are all acts of grace beyond our deserving and sources, yes, sources, beloved, of our never-ending joy. To know God as the creator of the ends of the earth and all that we know or are yet to know about human existence is at once truly reassuring but also ever mysterious. The same can be said of the pre-existent Christ who becomes the Son of God incarnate in human flesh to be not only one among us, but one with us, showing us the way to the Father, showing us the way to trust the Creator of the universe and all that lies therein. Yes, even showing us what it means to live within the envelope of God's everlasting love and sharing God's love with others. Again, can you hear the sound of intimacy between God the Creator and Christ the Savior who make this wondrous world of ours team with new life, who share concern for the bumblebee as God does the brokenhearted, and who calls us to live every day as if we are dying. So that we learn to marvel at the wonder of God's creation and praise for it. And to care for each other as their and our lives absolutely dependent on it. This is the sound of intimacy. This is our God still at work in the world. Ours is not a closed universe, but an open one. Indeed, acting like our caring for each other and our world depend on God. And grow in God's love each and every day. Imagine, if you will, this. Where God's grace and truth revealed through the natural world And in the fully human and divine life of Jesus Christ, ruled ours, that life. 
You tell me the transformations that might take place, the changes that might come, the love of God that might grow wild like a mustard seed, if that truly came to fruition. It staggers the imagination. It's also more than just a mere dream. What now the third thing? Well, here we go. Acts serves as our teacher. More specifically, Peter gives the sermon. And the note he sounds is also one of intimacy. Connecting the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with the Creator God, the Christ of God, and the Holy Spirit, Counselor of God. Faith, I will tell you, never comes to us on our own. It is not something we can manufacture. Something we create, something we call into being. Faith is born of the Holy Spirit, brooding over creation from its dawning to this very day, abiding in Jesus now, in the crucified yet risen Christ. And now to us, upon us, working in us, the Spirit of the living God poured out on the day of Pentecost, cutting our hearts to the quick, firing our minds and inspiring our belief in the God of the Trinity, one God in three persons who oversees all the seasons of our lives and helps us manage them who as Redeemer leads us in the darkest of days to see His life resurrected, to lean into it and then to live by it. And who is the Holy Spirit? Is our Counselor. Challenging us each and every day to bear the fruit of the Spirit. Love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. You tell me in this world in which we live today, which ones of those are getting broken time and time again? I tell you this Lord's Day that the earth is always rising and calling us to give the glory to God. The sun is risen, and in Him we rise too, daring to make our world more whole and holy. The Holy Spirit is always moving, brooding over the earth and all that lies beyond, and ever working faith in us if we dare to respond. And that's the key word. If we dare to respond to its clarion call. Indeed, the sound of intimacy is in the air always. You can trust me on that. So let's get our hearts beating. Let's get our feet moving. And let's get our hands ever serving the God of the Trinity, for there is so much love there. And so much of that love to share yet with this world. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Again and again. Amen. I invite you, if you will now, to stand and let us join in our affirmation of faith, taken from a brief statement of faith. I'm not only going to invite you to read the words, I ask you to think about them as you say them. Let us say together, in life and in death, we belong to God. We trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom we worship and serve. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully divine. We trust in the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So just a word about the anthem today. The anthem is continuing. Uh, If you see the music notes today, it's continuing 
our walk in the light of God. And so this anthem I would like to dedicate to Sharon for all that you have done in the 40 years that you have served and done for this church. And congregation, uh, there, if you watch Jewel carefully, uh, she might start um, wanting you to clap along, okay? So just watch her carefully as we sing, all right? And uh, just stay with the beat so Ron Lowe won't get off on the piano. so much from the hand of God, let us give now generously unto our morning offering.
Assemblies in Christ in honor of this Memorial Day weekend where we remember those who have served our country faithfully here and in other parts of the world. I'm going to ask that those who uh, are uh, veterans, if they would stand, will you please stand and let us uh, recognize you for your service? And will you remain standing, please? I'm going to ask, too, as well, uh, that uh, if you have someone who's actively serving in uh, the armed forces that you know, either in this congregation or perhaps somewhere else, will you please stand? If you in your lifetime have had a family member or a friend that you've known who has served in the military, will you please stand? Indeed, on this Lord's Day, giving great thanks for all those who have given their lives. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray together. Lord, while we remember the past shapes who we are today and influences how we will act tomorrow, on this Memorial Day weekend, we do remember and give thanks for those who made the ultimate sacrifice and service to their country. We grieve with those who grieve this day and pray comfort for those who mourn. We ask for the wisdom to allow the memory of those who died for a cause greater than themselves to form our words, opinions, and decisions in ways that honor them. Help us to take seriously the cost of war and enter into combat only when every other option has been exhausted. May the sacrifice of those we remember this day not be in vain, but instead guide us to work tirelessly for peace, justice, and freedom for all people. And indeed, we yet celebrate those who continue to serve. Lord, as we pray for peace in the world, grant your care and guidance to all others in need. Be also with our church family and your world family, pouring out your Spirit upon us, sheltering us with your love and guiding us in the way of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, who teaches us to pray and live to your glory, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will you please rise for the charge and benediction? Children of God, for that is who we are. Go under the mercy of the triune God, whoever seeks to know and be known by you. And truly, may the love of God, our Creator, the grace of Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Counselor, guide you and our world in the ways of grace and truth, both now and forevermore. Let all God's people say, Amen.